moving to go to Texas real quick. And uh, I said, well, what am I going to do about my gold? He said, I will give you the information to some other brothers, and they will help you with the gold. I said, I'm going to miss you. You know, he said, would you be my second wife? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to turn it into a comedy because now when I look back, I said I was set up from heaven. I really was set up. I, you know, when he said, would you be my... I'm like, man, you done lost your mind. I said, I'm not sharing a man with anybody. You lost your mind. Your wife will kill you. I'm going to tell her. He said, it's permissible in Islam. I said, you're a liar. He said, it's permissible in Islam. I like you. We can talk. You just be my talking wife. I said, no. I said, you know I'm already married. He said, we can talk to your husband about this. <laughs> when he left, I was devastated. He said, who am I going to talk to? I love talking to this man about Allah and the Islam and everything else. Well, he left, of course. And then my church federation, because I'm, I'm actually part of a church federation, my diocese has 167 churches. We're one unit of a huge amount, a table full of bishops, and they all have between 100 to 300 different churches. That's how big it was, what well, it is. And I went to Vegas with the Federation, and we held a meeting down there. When I was in Vegas, I was just going to the meetings, you know, as you do. And one night I went to my bed and I had what I thought was a nightmare. But now I understand the dream. I saw, it was a blue day, just a beautiful blue day because uh, I've been guided by Imam how to strategize this speech to condense and get the main points over. Because <laughs> he's told me what you want. It's what some of you want. The sky opened up and a, like, a, like a platform came down. On the platform was a well-girded man in military attire. I couldn't see his face, but I could see the military attire, old and ancient. Beside him was a female. She looked like she was from the Middle East. She had on a black uh, outfit. She was standing next to him and he was writing in a book. As he was writing in the book, the events were taking place on the earth. And this woman was looking to make sure the events took place. One of the things that he wrote was that there should be a massive earthquake in the U.S. And that the U.S. would split in half. And I saw my feet was on two sides of earth, rocking like this with all the lava bubbling underneath. There was a big green looked like a dome it was a, a, a it wasn't as luminous as that green it was more of a pastely green like that lady scarf but a little bit more lighter it's like a dome in england when there's a dome it means it's a mosque anywhere we see the dome all the mosques in england have 24 karat gold roofs but this one was not gold it was green which was strange I was calling the people to come into the dome, but it's like they weren't listening. Many fell into the lava, many got into the dome. While the man was writing, he asked the woman, what is she doing? That was me. I fell to the floor. I wanted to die immediately. I did not want to face whoever this was. She said, she's teaching from the three books. He said, three books? Then he looked and he raised my body without touching me. He raised me up to stand upright. Pushed his hand into my chest and pulled out. He had three books. He tucked them under his arm, went like this to the lady and they took off. And he smiled, but I didn't see his face. When I woke up, I was traumatized, sick for seven days, didn't go back to the church, abandoned all meetings, phoned my husband, called a doctor. Now I know 
something's wrong with me. I was shaking violently. It was me and Sister Robin that was on the trip. When I came back to Seattle, obviously, uh, with all the other visions I've had, I'm getting some strange visions. I'm, just, I'm seeing communities of Middle Eastern people laying on beds with bowls of fruit, little girls about this high, giving them fruits on the bed. I am asking the prophet, his name Jeremiah, why are these people eating fruit in bed? He said, you don't know these people? I said, I don't know them. They're all clapping and whistling. I said, I don't know these people. He said, you were famous when you were on the earth. I said, for what? He said, when you go back, you will see. They know you and you will know them. But I noticed that the grapes were like uh, organic, they were huge. And the apples and everything, they were huge. They weren't normal size. And I'm, they were just eating them. I was like, oh, I'm losing it. Something's wrong. Something is definitely wrong. When I got back, I pulled out of, of the church circle a little bit and just stayed with my little members. And I went shopping for carpets. I met a man from Iran at the carpet shop. The man was just watching me through the store. I said, oh, he probably thinks I'm a thief. <laughs> Look at him. He came over to me, I said, oh, why is he following me? Why is he following me? I'm not a thief, why is he following me? He came in, he said, sister, do you believe in God? I said, oh. <laughs> I said, yes, I do believe in God. He said, are you a Christian? I said, yes, sir. He said, really? I said, well, yeah. I said, I've been a Christian most of my life. I'm a pastor. I have my own church. He said, you have a church. I said, well, yes. He said, you're a Christian. I said, yes. He said, when you come back for the rod you pick, I will have something for you. I will call you. Give me your number. I gave him the number. I thought he was going to give me either a piece of gold or an extra rug or something. I'm, sh I'm in shopping mode, ladies. You know, shopping mode. You kind of forget about.